Runsack, Staffordshire and Cheshire, the show for news, features, reviews and all things running in your local area. Welcome to episode 56 of Runsack, Staffordshire and Cheshire. I'm Andrew Beckman. And I'm Gareth Copley-Jones. And I'm Ken Roston. Hi Ken, welcome back. Thank you very much. Regular. Um, We've got you on for a reason on this episode, so we're going slightly off format this time. But the the reason is we want to do a special episode on um, somebody who is, well, even more royal than you, I think, Ken, in the world of running. But we'll get into that in a little bit. But yes, the reason is um, to do a special episode on Don Shelley. So should we get straight into it? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah, well, as I say, thanks for coming on, Ken. Um, this episode is uh, a tribute to Don Shelley. Um, now, I'm sure a lot of people will know who Don Shelley is, um, but there'll also be plenty of John Joneses out there that won't know who he is. So before we get into the running side of things, can you tell us a little bit about who Don Shelley was as a person? So where he worked, um, his life, um, his family, and how did you get to know him, that kind of thing? Okay, so uh, uh, Don was uh, was uh, born in Stone and lived in, lived in Stone all his life. Um, started life off in the RAF, and that's where uh, he started running and carried on, uh, carried on after it. Uh, married to Jill and got two daughters, um, Vicky, Vicky and Lucy. And initially, as his uh, um, career was just running himself, he was uh, um, he was he was a fab- he was a fabulous uh, fabulous athlete. Um, as his PB, so uh, 49, 49 minutes for ten miles, one thirty nine for twenty miles, and um, um, two twenty three for the marathon. So he was a uh, he was, uh, you know, he, he was up there a classy runner. Uh, many sort of races in the sixties and early seventies um, with Ron Hill, you know. So he was, right. he was, you know, he was, he was a he was a highly rated athlete. Um, but really, it was when he started to work at um, at Metzling, uh, Metzling Athletic Club as a secretary, as his organising skills, uh, you know, started to come to the come to the fore. Right, okay. Um, so did he run with any running clubs or anything like that um, when he was in the 60s? And yes, he, he, started, he started off with Stone AC and uh, then he joined uh, North Staffs, North Staffs uh, and, and Stone Harriers, which uh, then actually um, it became City of Stoke AC, but it was, the, it was the sort of the top club around here. You know, sort of, in the, you know, in the six sixties and and the seventies. Um, so that were the clubs that he, you know, he he first started his athletic his athletic career with. Fantastic. So, how old would he have been in the sixties and seventies? Would he have been a young runner at that time when he? Yeah, he was. Well, he was born. He was born in 19, 1936. So, okay. in, in sort of the early sixties and mid sixties, he'd be late twenties, early thirties. You know, which we know for a distance runner, you, you, you know, you're probably in your prime, prime than late twenties. You know, sort of, you know, early thirties. So, uh, yeah, you know, he was, uh, you know, he was, he was in his prime then. And uh, what you've got to remember is in the sixties and seventies, as uh, running was a minority sport. Mm. You know, so uh, to see people out running was uh, something you didn't see that often. And um, Certainly for the um, for all the locals in Stone is that if they didn't know him personally, you always knew him as uh, that man that ran. That was how he was known in Stone. That that man that ran. Well, I can relate to that because we've got Michelle Ross Cope on uh, on our housing estate, and we see her uh, first thing in the morning. She's absolutely flying around the estate still. So I, I can relate to that. And a lot of the people who don't run, they're always, "Who's that lady that's always running around the estate?" <laughs> So yeah, I can relate to that. Um, so, how did you get to know uh, Don then, Ken? Well, the, how I got to how I got to actually know know Don is that um, um, I've just I'll just digress a little bit. Um, um, Don's responsible 
uh, and a roundabout way for me getting into running and getting into organising. Um, and we'll touch on the marathons, I know, in a little bit. But in 1982, first Pottery's Marathon, I went down to watch it. Um, that was it. I was hooked. And that's where my running career started. And then so I started, I started, um, you know, running, running local races, joined, joined Newcastle, Newcastle AC and uh, got to know Don really at races. That's how I, you know, I got to know, I got to know him. And uh, um, two good friends of mine, uh, Mick Thacker and Norman Deakin, who helped me so much in the early days of my career, they were really good friends with Don. So really, I got to know that I got to know Don through uh, through Mick Thacker and um, and Norman Deakin. <laughs> so the seventies, before the Potteries Marathon boom and running boom in general, there was a there was a little known thing called the North Staff started in seventy four. Yes, you've got that right. You've got that date right, Gareth. Yes, and um, actually, actually. Um, uh, Don Shelley formed North Staff Road Runners back in 19, 1974 and um, the format of it hasn't changed that much since 1974 other than we've got more groups and we've got a lot more ladies but it was still people into groups um, so they could um, do the races, get the points and uh, so, so on and so forth. 1975 was the first full season and there was actually uh, 24 24 members and there was 12 races that's what there was in, in 1974 um 47 years we're still going strong um i think that's um uh, that's a legacy to don shelley that something he started in 1974 is 47 years ago with all the changes that we've had in athletics and running as we, we're still going strong today and and the, what the north staff is now is 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 that what Don envisaged it back in 1974? Was that his initial idea? Well, it, it, yes, it was. That was that was his dream because even there back in the 70s, that he wanted he wanted to encourage more people to get into running, and he thought that if, if uh, he had this league system where people were put into into a, a league with people of a similar ability, that would encourage more people more people to start running. And um, it was it wasn't until 1979 as the ladies section was introduced uh, into North Staffs Road Runners. And uh, that's that started off with uh, with five lady members. Um, you know that that day. So Don's vision was 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 a twofold thing really as he wanted to get more people um, in, into into running. And along with uh, starting North Staff's Road Runners in 1974, as he actually organised um, uh, the first uh, local marathon in 1975, and it was the Three A's Marathon Championship, and um, that finished at the old Stoke City uh, Victoria Ground. You know, so that was where the seeds of the Potteries Marathon, you know, started. As you know, Don organised this first marathon in the in the city in 1975. So his organising started along with starting North Sass Road Runners. So what did Don run the races as well when he I was he in the early it? days? Yes, Don was still Don was still running running the races then. Um, we used to have uh, Battle Battle Five, which start which started and finished the season. The five mile, which we used to run, uh, the league ran that twice. Um, the John Ultram Ten. Which became the Trenton Tennis and now the 10K. That was uh, that was on the on um, the fixture list. Stafford 20. That was on that was on the fixture list in the in the first year as well. Um, Stone 10K, um, which was close to Don's home. So um, there was even a, a five mile race in Hartzell, the Hartzell Five. So a um, few races that we know about and a few that uh, you know that aren't you know aren't happening now, but. Uh, um, Done by that. Done by that time. Um, he, he was um, he was still only in his thirties, so he was still doing really well. And if not winning the races, was certainly you know high up in the placings. And over time, there's been different races, and it is, the league's sort of developed as it's gone along. So we've now got twenty counting races. Is it twenty three races normally? 
we've got we have we have normally now uh, we have 20 races in the program with with two two reserve races and it's your best 12 you know your best 12 to count what we always say is that um, you don't have to do 12 you know you can dip in and dip in and dip out you know you can just you know sort of join us it's never been expensive to uh, you know to join so you can you can actually do as little or as many of the races that you want but um, we have prizes for the top three who get promoted and also top three in every age category. So if you want to be competitive in either your league or your age category, you probably need to do the 12 races. Great stuff. Well, we, we were in the 70s and um, North Staff's Roadrunner started. You, um, you mentioned that he then organised another marathon, um, the Three A's Counties, was it that you said, that finished it? Well, it was the Three, eight, the three A's Championship, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, like sort of UK athletics and England athletics there, it came on with the Three A's, you know, Three A's banner, uh, ban- banner the Amateur Athletic Association. So it was okay. like the national championships that came to, you know, that came to Stoke and all the top marathon runners of the day um, ran, ran that race. So how many runners roughly were there in these um, local races that um, were organised that were in the North Staffs League and the three days? Well, there, was, there, wasn't that many, there wasn't that many at all. <clears throat> you know, uh, in the 70s, you, you, you were talking um, 50, 60, maybe 100 if you've got a big field. So there were, mm. you know, there were quite, quite, small, quite small fields. It wasn't until the boom of the early 80s when the fields just started to get, you know, sort of bigger, you know, bigger and bigger. But so yeah. in the early days, they were only small fields. Yeah. So talking of the boom in the 80s, um, we, we now are into the next decade and the Potteries Marathon came along. Um, so can you tell us how that came about? I, I know you said you didn't um, really join until you saw the first one, but I'm sure you might have a bit of an inkling as to how Don um, actually decided to set up that and why? Well, I, I, yeah, I think that? what the yeah, what sowed the seeds for that was that obviously Don had already organised one marathon. The very first London marathon was 1981. And that was what sowed the seeds. And uh, uh, Don, like everybody else, watched that on television and thought, we need to have a local marathon. So that's how it, you know, that's how it came about, formed the first you know, the first committee um, got his help and help us on board. And um, June 1982, we're in uh, Moreland Road in Burslow, um, the very first Potteries Marathon. Right. So is that where it first started then in Burslow? Yeah, the very first one. It started in Moreland Road, um, followed, followed down the marathon route that, that you know, that we all, that we all knew, uh, but almost starting at the 22-mile point. As if, if when, when it used to start and finish at Trenton Gardens, and that first year it finished at Trucks Cross. How many were there in that first year, roughly? I think there was about twelve hundred in that for, in that first in that first year. So it was obviously going to be a big success. Yeah. And in eighty three, it moved to Trenton Gardens with the, the right. iconic finish in the you know the grounds of Trenton Gardens, and it stayed there until um, two thousand and four when we had the last one. But certainly through the 80s, um, when it, the numbers started to grow and we were in the midst of a marathon boom, then everybody wanted to run a marathon. As, um, they were getting close to 3,000 in it. So yeah. sort of 2006, 2,700 in it. And it was voted on more than one occasion, uh, the top marathon in the country, be, you know, beating London. Mm. Um, even though it was, it was a top marathon, as everybody wanted, you know, wanted to finish it, and um, you probably wouldn't get a better finish anywhere in the country than, um, you know, Trenton Gardens with the backdrop, backdrop of the lake. Well, I remember because my, my granddaddy used to be like the national social organizer for BT at the time, so he had a big marquee in Trenton Gardens, and I'm sure there was probably a lot of other companies like Michelin and them that had, had the same. And I, I just remember that from when I was young and the atmosphere was amazing. Can you explain to people, obviously, it, it, was, a, it was an event for the whole city, wasn't it? Because it toured the whole city. Can you explain well, what the buzz must have been like over that week? Oh, it, it, it was absolutely amazing because 
once again, Don was ahead of everybody else. That we used to have a weekend, a weekend festival of Ronnie. We hear all these <clears throat> races now that are called the Festival of Ronnie. Well, Don was doing that um, in the 80s. So on the Friday night, Friday night, we'd have a family fun one around the lake, which we'd have over 2,000 people in that. Uh, Saturday afternoon, we used to have a ladies only race, um, way, way before Race for Life. We, you know, where um, me and Don, me and Don were doing this. Um, there used to be an exhibition in the Great Hall all weekend, where uh, Bourne Sports and Dale Sports were there. You know, and, and you know, and, and other stands were there. Uh, you came down, collect your number, and there, there was just there was just thousands and thousands of people there. And the gardens itself on on the, on the day welcoming people in, as they used to be packed to the rafters, because it used to be. Above the gardens, there used to be a big camping site, and so loads of people would come with uh, with uh, you know the camper vans or the tents, and and we camp for we camp for the weekend. Um, if you ever see any of the sort of old old uh, Finnish pictures, you'll see that there's there's just thousands of people you know in, in Trenton Gardens, and and the atmosphere the atmosphere was electric. Brilliant. So. What was Don's role on the day and how much work was there involved in putting 3,000 people on? I can't imagine what it yeah, was. I, yeah, I mean, and also, don't, don't, don't forget, as this is in, in the days that uh, we haven't got chip timing, there's, 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 no te- there's no technology, all the times, are, you know, all the times are, you know, are hand, handwritten, handwritten down, so we've got all that. But one thing, one thing that Don was, um, I learned so much for him, um, Don was about attention to detail, so we have everything, everything in place, and um, the number of uh, you know sort of people and organisations that you know he you know he got working uh, and helping him on, on the event, you know, was unbelievable. So by the time we actually got to the day, everything was in place, and really, like any good race director, on the day you should just be overseeing things. Mm. Uh, you shouldn't have a specific role. You you were just there, uh, just as if somebody needs to ask you a question, and um, that's what Don's role was on the day. As he was basically overseeing everybody who got the job, knew what they got to do, and uh, Don just left us to get on with it. And I learned so much from you know from um, Don's organisation organisational skills. You know when I went on to organise events myself. Well. It was such a big event, and I think the boom coincided with a lot of charity and um, sponsored runners um, taking part to, to do the challenge um, and raise money at the same time. So can you tell us a bit about some of the things that you saw and how much money it raised and all things like that? Um, uh, yeah, well, another thing that was close to Don's heart is he wanted to have these community events, but he wanted to, he wanted to raise you know, raise money for, for local charities. And that's been a theme uh, theme all the way through. And I think it's safe to say with um, both the marathon and the Potter's Art, which I know we'll, we'll touch on later, is a, a conservative estimate is over a million pounds has been raised for local charities. Um, obviously, the two main ones, Dougie Mac and uh, Donna Louise. But people used, people used to raise, uh, raise things with close to the heart. You know, and we, you know, we've had fancy dress people, fancy dress people. We've had a wheelchair race incorporated in, you know, in, in, with, in with the Potts uh, Marathon. And so many people um, decided to run the marathon and raise money for any courses that were close to the heart. So, Ken, the Potters Marathon came to an end. Um, we, we all know... We, we, it sort of ran its course really, but it changed into the half marathon. So how did the half marathon come about? Was because I wasn't in the area, unfortunately. But is it did it was it like literally the next year it turned into the half marathon or well what happened in 2000 that we we noticed towards the end of the 90s and into into the 2000s as the numbers in the Potters Marathon were starting to go down because everybody seemed to want to either run London or they wanted to go abroad to run New York or Rotterdam, um, those sorts of things. Numbers were dwindling. 
Um, in two th after the 2003 event, as we had a meeting, um, our chairman at the time, Peter Bailey, he just said, that's it. He says, um, you know, enough's enough. Um, you know, let's sort of, we've had a good run, let's call it a day. And me and Don, we fought passion passionately to keep it. And what we said is, right, let's just give it one, one more year. And what we'll do, we'll go out to the people and say, if you don't support them, if you don't support the marathon, we're still here. Yeah, I've, I've just yeah disappeared, disappeared. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, I can't I can't see you. <laughs> you left um, me hanging, and I was waiting for this. <laughs> you you just you've disappeared. I don't know where I don't know where you've gone to. Well, we can still see you, so... Right, okay, so, so I'll, I'll just carry on then. Yeah. So, yeah, so me, me, and, me and Don fought to keep it, and we, we put a, um, loads of press stuff out saying, if we don't get the numbers, then it'll be the last one. And sadly, we didn't get the numbers. We only got 550 in the last, in the last one. And so um, we, we, decided, we decided then, as, you know, enough enough was enough and we've got to you know we've got to do something and that really is we decided that we were going to change it to a half marathon and we were almost forced into into going to um a, a city center because we talked about city center but we didn't want to lose uh, trenton gardens and try as we might because uh, the one one road you can't get a road closure for for a, an amount of time is the 834 because it's the main uh, thoroughfare if there's an accident on the motorway. And literally, with from Trenton Gardens to get back to Trenton Gardens in 13.1 miles, we couldn't do it. We just, we, just could, we just couldn't get back. And so that was how we decided, right, it's going to be a half marathon from the city centre in Hanley, and we'll incorporate as much of the Pottery's Marathon course that we can. So lots of planning went planning that went into that because obviously we were starting again with a with a blank sheet, and um, we were vindicated by the uh, choosing of the half marathon as the first year as we got just uh, we got just over a thousand people. That's fantastic. Okay, one thing it is that who who decided to put a heartbreak hill on miles? Right. So that was once again that was actually that was actually forced on us is that the original course um, where now you go, where now you go along Berry Hill and you take the right into Milton Road, Heartbreak Hill, the original course carried a little bit past Berry Road and it did a left turn into Mornington Road. And if you go up Mornington Road, it brings you to the top of Heartbreak Hill. The only problem being then we were doing a right-hand turn onto Milton Road. And we caused absolute traffic chaos. We brought that part of the city to a, to a halt. And when we had a debrief with um, Pete Aston from the police, who was such a massive supporter, is that he says, the only thing we've got to look at, he says, we've got to change that right-hand turn out of Mornington Road. And we went to have a look at it. And the only way we could go is to go along Berry Road and um, turn right into Milton Road. Which, as we said, now we know is the uh, the infamous um, heartbreak hill. So that's how it came about. That was in year year two, two thousand and six. And it's been a massive success ever since. It's still going. It's running again. Fingers crossed in September. Um, Don's role in it. How, how long did he carry on with the half, the half marathon? When did he? Yeah, Don's role start? again. Once again, he was the he was the race director. And right through, he was a race director through till 2012. I was his right hand man, and he'd done most of the prep before uh, for the 12, 2012 event. And unfortunately, his health started to suffer. And I got a phone call from him, and he said, "He says, can you come over to his house?" And we went, we went over to his house, and I knew, yeah, I knew from the meetings we had that he wasn't too well. And he just says, I can't carry on. I can't do it anymore. And he says, um, you know everything. He says, you know, you know, will you carry that? You know, will you carry that on for me? And so um, 
Christmas, well, just into, it was January, January um, 2012. So it was sort of um, five months before the race. I, you know, I, I took it on. And, uh, you know, um, I've got uh, a, a good master to follow. So basically, I just followed what Don did. He, he'd done all the, all the big work. And I just followed what, you know, what, what he did. So he, he's um, reigned from setting North Staffs Road Runners up in the 70s through to 2012. He's, um, he's certainly made himself known on the running circuit. What's he been up to since he stepped down? What, what was he... What did he... It, it, well, it, it, his health, his health, his health uh, hasn't been too good at all, so he hasn't done a lot, really. Uh, he came to watch the, the Poppers off in uh, 2014, but that was the last time that he was at a, was at a, li a live running event. Um, odd occasions, because he'd got a great love of cricket, so um, odd occasions he'd go down, he'd go down into Stone to watch the watch the cricket. But uh, um, he didn't, do, he did like I say, he didn't, he didn't do a lot really from uh, 2012 because his his health his health wasn't you know his health wasn't you know very good and you know it was um, it was a shame really when. You know, he'd been such an active, an active person. Fantastic. So, this is the um, final question I've got for you on uh, Don Can. So, make it good. Um, what final words would you like to say to commemorate Don? I think he was an inspirational person. I think he was ahead of his time. And I think the legacy of North Staffs Roadrunners and popped us off, um, will last for many, many years. And that is uh, thank you to Don Shelley. So, Ken, since we've got you on, it'd be rude not to talk about the start of the, the new season. It went off uh, fantastically well. Um, We've all said the virtual all said five. Um, it seemed like we had a lot of runners. Did we have a lot of runners? Was it a massive success that we it it was, appeared to be? It was it was amazing, Gareth. It was absolutely amazing. We ended up with 687 runners. Right. I just couldn't believe it every time we were looking at the, the entry list, it just kept going up and up and up. Um coincide with that, we've had a massive increase in new members in North Sash Roadrunners, uh, 200, 212 new members. So um, it's just been a phenomenal start to the start to the season. That's brilliant. Um, did you get together 600 t-shirts? I guess you wouldn't have imagined that. Well, we didn't. I mean, when I was talking, I was talking to um, Chris at Blackpool, who we always had my t-shirts from, and I was talking to him sort of before Christmas, and I said, oh, I said, I'm, I'm expecting, I think we'll do all right. I think we'll get about 250, 300, <laughs> like how long was that? You know, <laughs> send, him, send him an email, just so say, uh, make sure you, you've got enough stock, and we're up to 400, we're up to 500, we're up to 600. But um, here's the rub from that. Because at the moment, as as we know, we're still in lockdown, and unless things change very very quickly, we have got um, uh, 675 t-shirts coming. But there's just two of us, me and Sue, to pack them. So that's a nice little job for us. <laughs> You've not well, got you the dog trained up yet. So is it like North Staffs, you've got all these extra runners. So you've got 200 new runners. Is that right, Ken? Yeah, well, just over 200, 200 new runners. Yeah. So how many um, is that all together? Well, with the people, the people who've rejoined, we're now, we're now we've got 400, 450 Ooh. members. Wow. Wow, that's really impressive. Uh, and as, I said, as you heard me say, you heard me say before uh, when we've been talking about this massive increase in uh, ladies running and we've created a new ladies group because we've had so many ladies um, join so we've now got five ladies groups to uh, get them all get them all grouped up and, and they're all loving it at the moment 
And, and it's not too late to sign up to North Staff? No, and... no there's, only, there's only one event gone. We've still got 19 events to go. So anybody can head over to North Staff Road on this website. Um, you'll see the link there to join up. Uh, just five pounds for the for the whole of the season. So I think in um, you know this day and age that you know that's really good, really good value. And also if you go to our website, then um, you'll you'll be able to read more information about North Sash Road Runners. But basically, as yes, we we group you uh, with people of a sem- similar ability, uh, and that's really how it works. So with all these new runners. This is what happens after every race, every first race. And there's a lot of new runners, a lot of new names. Have you had to do much changing round in the group yet? There's, uh, yes, we, we, we had the, as soon as the league tables were coming out, we knew straight away that some people, that some people were, were going to be moved. We waited till the league tables come out and we, we've gone through them yesterday. Um, there's 11 people who um, have received a very nice email saying congratulations on your amazing run at uh, All Sager. Uh, you've had a very early season promotion. You are now in such and such a group and we're posting the new letters out to them tomorrow. We've got another another few, not, not, that, not that many, three or four that we've, uh, we're just going to keep an eye on. They're, they're sort of borderline. Um, We've uh, we've moved a couple of people couple of people down, and we'll we'll have a look at it again after night. And when we've got three races, but the uh, the really speedy ones for um, each group, um, you know, that really shouldn't be in that group, then uh, they they they've been moved, and they will have had an email, you know, sort of um, telling them you, you're too quick for that group. But I think with us um, we're grouping over two two hundred people. Uh, plus the you you know the all, already established members. I don't think that's too bad. So I think come by the time we get tonight, and I think we'll be settled down, and everybody will know where they are in the groups. Funny funny thing, isn't there, Ken? I had to email uh, you on the Sunday, didn't I? And say, Ken, I think you need to have a look at this person. There's, there was somebody in six that of about five hundred runners, and they were in the group with <laughs> But it turns out they were actually an A group, but um, for some reason we got them down as D. But yeah, yeah. Right, I think we've got this person. Yeah, well, like I say, we've had, we've had most most people have actually gone up one group, but we have had a couple of people as they've, they've gone up two they've gone up two groups. Right. right. Uh, you know because uh, you know the time the time for that good. So you know they've either been either been doing a bit more training since the um, you know they joined North Saturday Runners, or maybe it's the first virtual one. That they've done, so you know we, there's a bit more sort of competitive spirit there. But uh, yeah, so uh, 11, 11 have, have changed groups. So you stay where you are, Andy. Say that again. You stay where you are. <sighs> we haven't we haven't moved you. <laughs> Actually, so I you quite enjoyed it. it definitely mm-hmm. helped. I wouldn't have been able to run that without being in North Staff. So I think I think that's I think that's what a lot of people are saying. And, and what I'm what I'm loving about it is in the build and the build up and when the races are going, you know, over the five day window, how everybody's posting pictures and you know and talking about it. And it just sort of brings us together a little bit as a you know as a community. Um, we know as it's only a stop a stop gap until we can get real races and we're all desperate, desperate for real races. I haven't been to a real race since March the 8th, 2020. That was the last time I was at a real race. Um, and that was your own, wasn't it? That was my own. That was that <laughs> yeah. was there. Well, I think, like I say, I think it's proved that it's uh, it's a nice little stop gap until we get, you know, we get the real races back. Mm. Well, I haven't got long to get this podcast out because the next one is this weekend, isn't it? So. It's a new race. Tell us a little bit about it, Ken. Yeah, yes, it is. Um, what we've done with what we've done with uh, this one. This is um, Potter's Town. Now, normally it would be Rugeley Town, but for um, whatever reason, they didn't want to do a virtual event, so we just decided to put this uh, ten mile in, so we can get a you know a different distance for them. Uh, starts on Friday, runs through till uh, till Tuesday. Um, once again, it's going really well because we, we're creeping up 
I think I looked earlier this evening, we're creeping up towards 300 in this one. You know, so uh, if you want to get your points in North South Road Runners, you've got to do it as one continuous run. But we've also got the community side of it where that you can do uh, multiple runs of any distance that you want as long as they add up to 10 miles over the five days. You know, so we're trying to be as inclusive, you know, inclusive as we can so everybody, you know, comes and has a go. Uh, once again, we've got a lovely T-shirt uh, designed by Shell Harrop of Potter's Trotters. Uh, she's coming up with some fabulous designs for us. So I think that's something nice for drop through people's doors, you know, when they've done the race. Mm. So I'm going further on from the Potter's 10 this weekend. Um, we've got, it's looking like all races at the moment are going to be virtual up until, well, the summer, isn't it? Um, I think. Well, at the, at the moment, following following on from following on from Potter's Potter's Ten, we've got nine and ten, nine and ten k. Um, we've then got South Cheshire Ten k, um, Utopia to Half, and Clayton Ten k, which takes us to the middle of May. So all those are all those are virtual. I think what we're waiting for now is I think that we've got some sort of government announcement next uh, Monday with the roadmap out of it. And I think from that we'll have a little bit of a clearer picture, you know, as to you know as to where 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 are we going with it. Um, we'll just follow the government guidelines, follow what UK Athletics, you know, say. And as soon as it's safe uh, to put a live event on, you know, we, we will put a live event on. But uh, at this moment in time, um, I don't think any of us are in a position to say exactly when it will be. Let's hope it's Laura Kingsbury. First question, Ken. There you go, Gary. Let's just hope it's Laura Coombsburg's first question to Boris. When's when's the North Staff start thing? Yeah, exactly. When 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 can, when can well, we need that question asking? When when can we have a proper road race? You ask all these other questions. When you when you're going to be allowed back into theatres? When can we go back into into the pubs? When can we go back into the football matches? I haven't seen one person ask the question, when can we have a proper road race? Yeah, no, no. The question needs to be asked. Yeah, is Mia Brook going to happen, Boris? Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's a nice conclusion to the, um, the day's proceedings. Um, thanks very much for joining us again, Ken. Um, I think that's about it for the episode. What are you guys up to? I'm... Not going to say this next week, but over the next few weeks, just in case. Well, I think the main the main thing from for, for me is I've got coming up is uh, is packing all the packing all these <laughs> t-shirts and, and getting them out. So I think I think that's me sorting as soon as the the boxes of t-shirts arrive. Just on that, um, have you got any idea? Because I know there'll be people desperate to get the, get them on in training. You got any idea how long they will be, roughly, before uh, they get sent out? I ordered, I ordered them last Wednesday, and um, uh, the supplier who, who I deal with, John Roberts in Blackpool, he was hoping to have them with me in in around about ten days' time. So probably right. towards the end of towards the end of next weekend, and right. then uh, you can be assured us, me and Sue will be working flat out <laughs> um, to get them packed up. Um, up to the post office and out to all the lovely people. Well, if you need a hand, Gareth said he's available. <laughs> <laughs> I we get the daggers when I go in the post office yeah. anyway. If I turn up with 600 T-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Gareth? What are you up to? Um, well, I've signed up for the Potters 10, so I'll be, I'll be doing that. I haven't worked out my route yet. I ran the old stage on a very flat course, and I know the Potters 10 can be on a flat course. Oh, it's just a bit boring, isn't it, running on the flat? I know you get a quick time, but um, yeah, so I've got to work out a, a route for Potter's 10. Um, I've started taking part in the um, Trig Point Premier League, so I've been doing a few of those. Um, they're quite spaced out, them, them Trigs. Um, <laughs> but yeah, half term, isn't it? So yeah, no homeschooling. So yeah, no, um, yeah, a bit of running here and there. What are you up to, mate? Um, again, yeah, Potter's 10. I aren't entered yet, but I will do in due course. Um, I'm probably joining you on a, a weekend of trick hunting. Um, we've got the week off homeschooling. I don't know if you're continuing, did you say, Gareth? But, um, yeah. 
it's hard enough getting her to do it when she's meant to be doing it. So, um, yeah, I'll give her the week off. Um, and that's about it, I think. Yeah, work. And then back to it. So um, we want to speak to you out in the world. Um, feel free to get in touch. Tell us about your adventures. Um, info about any runs that you're doing, anything crazy, anything charity. Or if you just want to tell us about your running group or any review on merchandise, etc. Um, we'll be back soon, won't we? I've not put, have you noticed, I've not put we'll be back next week. I've put we'll be we'll back. back next week. <laughs> so there's one Stay thing to do, guys. Come on. Yeah. What do we keep, say? Keep run sacking. Keep run sacking, everyone. Keep run sacking. Thanks very much.